there everyone! Welcome to another episode of the Weekly Roundup. This week we're talking about how neural networks might help autism diagnosis, and how an AI researcher made a super toxic language model trained on 4chan data. Don't forget to subscribe on whatever platform you're watching this and turn on notifications to make sure that you never miss an update on the latest and greatest in data science. Our first story this week covers how a large language model trained on 4chan text evolved into a hypertoxic, hateful online presence. On the 3rd of June, YouTuber and AI researcher Yannick Kilcher released a video about how he developed an AI model named GPT-4chan and then deployed bots to pose as humans on 4chan itself. As time went on, the model began to perfectly encapsulate the mix of offensiveness, nihilism, trolling and deep distrust of any information whatsoever that permeates most posts on 4chan's anonymous message board. In spite of Kilcher's extensive set of disclaimers, which included a recommendation not to deploy the model unless its behaviour is well understood and limited, the video and model itself created a heated debate in the AI community. Hugging Space, the platform on which the model was hosted, first restricted access to the model and has since removed the model altogether. The common themes among those who disagreed with the model were that the model has already or is very likely to cause harm, that making the bot interact with 4chan users was unethical, and that Kilchin knew this would cause controversy and did all of this with a specific intent for that to happen. Much of the pushback from Kilcher's supporters has outlined the academic value of the model and the fact that the model hasn't caused harm, and even if it did so, that it wouldn't be the only model that could create such problematic text. If you're interested in reading the full scope of the arguments for and against GPT-4chan, we'll link a great article in the description below. And we'd love to hear your thoughts on whether or not this type of research is useful. Our next story covers the recent announcement from Microsoft that they'll be adding more AI and machine learning powered improvements to Microsoft Teams, aiming to fix problems like audio quality that are becoming more and more relevant in our digitally connected world. These new features include echo cancellation, adjusting audio in poor acoustic environments, and allowing users to speak and hear at the same time without interruptions. These build on AI powered features recently released like expanding background noise suppression. Echo cancellation uses a model trained with 30,000 hours of speech samples to stop the echo effect created by having a speaker and microphone too close together. This feature will also allow for people to interject without it causing an echo, and Microsoft hopes that this will make conversations flow more naturally over their platform. The company has also included machine learning based noise suppression as a default in order to cancel out noises like dogs barking or sirens in the background of video calls. On top of the audio improvements, the team at Microsoft have implemented AI optimization to combat the effects of poor internet connectivity, as well as brightness and focus filters that put you in the best light when your lighting conditions might not be ideal, such as sitting in front of a window or being in a poorly lit room. We love technologies that better enable teams to work together across the globe, and can't wait to see how much these changes will improve calls in the future. Will these updates fix any of your awkward MS Teams interruptions? Let us know in the comments! Our final story this week takes a look at how researchers are using neural networks to shed more light on autism and improve diagnostic tools for clinicians. Kohiti Carr, a research scientist at MIT, has been re-examining historical data on the neurological differences between autistic and neurotypical adults. In one key experiment, scientists showed images of faces to autistic adults and to neurotypical controls. The images had been generated to vary on a spectrum from fearful to happy, and the participants judged whether the faces depicted happiness. Compared with neurotypical adults, autistic adults required higher levels of happiness in the faces to report them as happy. By applying a neural network to the same dataset, Carr was able to evaluate the effects of various parts of the model and how they impacted the outcomes of the experiment. A key question in the scientific understanding of autism is where exactly the observable neurological difference comes from. Science has narrowed the search down to either the IT cortex or the amygdala, and by comparing the layers of processing in his neural network, Carr believes it's the IT cortex driving different interpretations of facial expressions. In addition to providing more evidence in the neuroscience field, Carr's model was also able to create sets of images that show much clearer differences between autistic and neurotypical adults than images traditionally used in diagnostic tests. Using these image sets could improve clinicians' ability to correctly diagnose autism and get the right people the right care. We love seeing the impact that data science can have in improving healthcare and are excited to see this new application of neural networks. That's the end of another roundup. We hope you enjoyed the episode and won't forget to share your thoughts in the comments. We've been getting some amazing feedback and love getting to know you all a little bit better. Have an amazing week and we'll see you same time, same place next week.